Hi, welcome. Welcome to this week's episode of Cool Chief. And today I have Jenny with us, who is, who is a midlife reinvention coach. And she comes to us via Norway. She currently lives in Norway. She is from England. But we are lucky that she is willing to share her expertise on how to transition into empty nest. And I know, um, I know a lot of us are, are dealing with that. If we haven't already transitioned, I myself am looking forward to these tips because I have a 17-year-old who is a junior in high school and his departure is imminent. And it worries me, right? Because I don't know how I'm going to transition. So Jenny has said that she's got five tips for us, women in midlife, as we deal with the transition. Very excited. But before I turn it over to Jenny to have her introduce herself, if you haven't seen one of these Cool Chief episodes previously, my name is Jack Perez, and I am the CEO and the founder of Cool Life. Cool Life is spelled all cattywampus with a K, K-U-E-L-L-I-F-E, -E, and it is a platform in an online community for us women in midlife, meaning all of the content you know, on the site, on the digital site, and in these episodes is geared to deal with the issues and the concerns that we women after 45 are, a lot of us are facing. Uh, before we actually get into the empty nest topic, Jenny, I know I already introduced you, but I could not do you justice. Could you do me the honor of introducing yourself to my audience and letting us know how you became a midlife reinvention coach? Okay. Well, as, as you mentioned, I am a midlife reinvention coach and uh, basically my work is to help midlife women um, create a business they love and live a life they deserve, taking them from uninspired to unstuck to unstoppable. And um, my certification is actually in transformational coaching. But as a midlifer, um, I felt this was a a good area to, to work in it literally I'm I'm bringing my life experience as long as well as my um, actual qualifications so that the two really go hand in hand so uh. and one of the things I love about this community is that we do we have so much wisdom Jenny as we age and to be able to share that with other sisters so that we can learn from you know the the our, our failures but also our successes right I mean why wouldn't we want to share that and you yourself said you are have already transitioned into an empty nest. Is that is that true? Yeah, absolutely. I have um, two children. I have a son of twenty four and a daughter of twenty. And uh, when we were bringing them up, we dis decided we wanted our children to experience life, see the world, um, and that's exactly what they did. So not only did they leave home, they both decided to study overseas. So currently, my son is in the US. He's actually in Chicago, but he's, he's got a new opportunity. So he's off to Dubai this month. And our daughter has yeah. just this year moved from Norway to Australia to study. So literally, not only did, did they leave home, um, they left the country and, and went somewhere new too. So, uh, well, but you left home too. You live in Norway. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So I, I think, yes, we probably shot ourselves in the foot there in as much as we wanted our children to experience the world. So they've literally just taken us at our word. <laughs> Well, you know what? You led by example. And I think that's a really big, I mean, I'm raising my son in much the same way. I have taken him on, I take him on as many trips as I possibly can. And he, he giggles because he's like, mom, usually women, you know, moms take their kids to Paris or Italy if they're going to take them out of the country. He goes, you take me to Cuba or Morocco. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because I want you to experience the real world. Right. And so I, I think I might be facing some of the same issues that you have faced and that I think that yeah. the wingspan will be much bigger than maybe I would, that I would personally like. Well, we talk about degrees of separation. Used to, it used to be six degrees of separation. Now I think our world is smaller because we, we travel more. Our, our son, we're trying to figure it out actually. I think it's our son leading the way. He's been to over, well, nearly 40 countries. Um, I think my husband is next with about 36, 37. Um, and then my daughter and I, so literally they have embraced travel and, and seen the world. So um, my son's move, for example, to Dubai is it's a new exciting chapter for him. It's, it's something exciting. So fabulous. We're very happy. Well, 
I could do a whole conversation on travel because I have such wonderlust. But I think what we want to really let's let's get back to the topic, which was transitioning into being an empty nester. What are some of your tips and advice for women who are going through that transition? Okay, I have lots I could I could mention, but we're going to keep it to five. So I basically want to start with um, enjoying the time with your children before they leave. Um, we we look at babies and suddenly we realize they're all grown up and they're out the door. But that transition time, that time just before they leave, I think is, is super important because um, you know, th things are changing. So for example, I'd urge people to think about whether the dishwasher is stacked, whether the bedroom is tidy, whether they've done what you expected them to do because in the great scheme of things they are very little things if you want to think that your last conversation as your child goes out the door was well they didn't tidy their room or they didn't do what they, they said it's not worth sweating the small stuff they're, these are precious times these are times to if they're sitting down watching you know binge watching something hey sit down with them in the in enjoy the time with them i can't emphasize that enough because you know when they're out the door things are going to change. So that, that would be my first top tip. So what I'm hearing is sort of meet them where they are, you yeah, know, absolutely. meet them where they are. And I, my son has taught me a lot about that over the last six, six or seven months. I, I used to be the kind of person who'd be like, why is there stuff all over the floor of your bedroom? You know, did you take a shower? And then I realized, oh my goodness, shut up, <laughs> you know, stop it. Because he, I was pushing him away. He was getting at that age where he is, you know, he's 17. He's like, I think I can manage on my own, at least at this level. So that's great. So meet them where they are and don't sweat the small stuff. I think don't that's sweat the small stuff. It, it, it's really not worth it because these are really precious times because once they leave, even if they come back afterwards and, you know, some children do, they return home because they're saving for a mortgage or, you know, looking for a job or, or something. It's never going to be quite be the same. So yeah, basically, don't don't sweat it. It's, okay. it's not worth then it. What else? What else are you? What's, what okay. else? Are you I would say acknowledge your feelings. Um, you're probably a lot of people are going to stand in their empty bedroom and cry and just I don't know make make too much dinner. That's that's a good one. Making too much dinner. You know, you cook for four or five, and suddenly there's only two of you. So just acknowledge your feelings um, rather than. Um, you know, try to put a brave face on it. Have that time when you think, yes, okay, they have moved, but acknowledge that things are going to change. You know, there is this is a, a transition for you as much as it is for them. So it's okay to be sad. It's not okay to be sad all day, every day. Uh, we'll come to that. But okay. it's, it's okay to have those moments where you, you know, maybe stand in their bedroom or, or whatever and, and, and think about them. It's, it's, it's okay. You've, they, you've been with them for so many years and suddenly they're gone. So it's understandable that you're, you're going to be, be sad. Well, and it's interesting because I've always, I've always believed that the relationship that I've had with my son is, it's not mutual. I mean, it's not balanced. Meaning I remember before he was born, I remember him inside of my, you know, in, in, inside me and growing. And I loved him before I even had him. But he didn't really acknowledge who I was or start, you know, I mean, his memories don't start as far back as mine. And I would jump in front of a moving train for him, but that's, it's, it doesn't work the other way around. And it's okay. You know, it's okay to let them, you've done a good job is what I'm hearing. If they're able to leave and move on and it's okay to be upset about it or sad, but it is, it is a bittersweet time, isn't it? It's a bittersweet, it's a bittersweet time. And, and it, it's worth trying to be brave. It, it's a new thing for them too. As much as it is for you, it is for them too. They're, they're venturing into the unknown. Even if they're going to be studying, for example, a subject that they know well and that they love, they're, they're going to have to make new friends. They're going to be making their own new little home. So it's about acknowledging that you feel sad, but not, not being overwhelmingly sad so that they feel wretched about leaving you behind it's 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 a two-way thing i mean some parents are absolutely delighted as soon as they drop their kids off they're off on a, a six-month cruise or something so again acknowledge your feelings you may be happy that you're suddenly getting this time you've done your job you've your, your child has moved on to their next chapter and hey you're ready for yours so, so what i'm hearing is it's okay how you feel 
You just yeah. have to acknowledge it, whether you're thrilled and you're ready to take off or you're really sad and you're having a hard time. Okay. So I got it. All right. Perfect. I got it. So don't pick, don't pick, nitpick the small stuff. Enjoy your remaining time, mm -hmm. you know, acknowledge however it is that you feel. And there's no wrong way to feel is what I'm, I'm hearing you say. Yep, so what are some other ideas? Because these are, those are two really great ones. I'm definitely okay. writing them down. <laughs> this is my favorite. I probably should have had this as number one, but it wouldn't have made sense in, in the right order. My favorite is tech is not your enemy. We're a very, um, you know, we, we, we talk so much about kids being on tech and they're always on the phones, et cetera. But tech, turn tech into your friend because literally we are in Norway. We have a son in Chicago. We have a daughter in Australia. And we've already spoken to both of them today, which is great. And we've been able to see them. We also saw our daughter's um, untidy bedroom as she was running out the door to go to something. But we, we, we actually got the opportunity to see them and tech has in, enabled that to happen for us to speak to them in real time. And in actual fact, here's a, a good example for you. Um, when the Game of Thrones uh, finale was on, you know, the last Game of Thrones show, my husband and son actually watched it together in completely different places. My husband was actually working in the US, so he was in his hotel room. My son was in Chicago and they both watched Game of Thrones in real time and were able, and they both had takeout food and they were able to chat in real time about what do you think is going to happen, et cetera, et cetera. So is that the same as being together, literally sitting on the sofa together? No, it's not, but it's pretty darn close. It's pretty close. I mean, honestly, especially in today's world, that is really close. This is, I don't know when you went to college, but I remember having to go use the phone down the hall, you know, and I called my parents every Sunday because, you know, I just didn't, I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have FaceTime. I didn't have the ability to text. So, and, and long distance phone calls, at least in this country were expensive back then. So you weren't just willy nilly calling your parents. You, you saved everything up for the 20 minutes you had on Sundays. <laughs> so yeah, that's exactly. awesome. And, and that's been really, that's been really wonderful, I, I have to say, to, to be able to do that, to speak to them in, in real time and knowing that just within a, a second that they can actually reach us, um, even for something silly or, or just I even something important. Um, but it also sounds like you get to be more part of their daily life, like your son watching a, a TV show, which isn't a monumental event. Well, I, you know, it probably was a monumental event for those Game of Thrones people, <laughs> because I know that was, a, there was a really big, you know, cult following of that show. But what you're saying is that you can do ordinary things with your kids, even after they've gone, if you embrace technology and at least continue that thread of a relationship with them, for sure. which, is, which is wonderful, which is wonderful. I mean, we can, we can have a four-way conversation. We can have the four of us talking online. I mean, a bit like the Brady Bunch, all those different kind of windows of yeah, yeah. Ericsson. It's kind of like what we're doing right now, but with two more yeah. windows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ab ab absolutely. And that's, that's great. So literally we could, for example, if we were going to be talking about what's happening at Christmas, we could literally have a four-way conversation. So where are you? What are you doing? What's your schedule? When do you finish? I don't know we can do that all in real time rather than I'll have to call your brother. I'll have to call your sister. Right. We can just do it in real time. So, you know, we, we, we moan a lot about kids and tech and the, the, the misuse of, but actually if you use it in that way, it's just, it's just a great way to use tech basically. Great. So these are wonderful. What can you share, share another one with us? Cause another one is obviously you're going to have, more time on your hands. So I mean, this is something I, I speak to my clients about is starting a business. So it, it is a great time to think about starting a new business, but it's also a time to reconnect with friends. It's time to think about what you would like to do, especially if you miss your, your, your children so much and you think that it's, it, it's unbearable to be able to think, well, hey, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try something different. And that's something that you can share with them. So my daughter, for example, is when, when we check in with each other, she's pleased that I'm doing, oh, you're trying something new. That's really cool. And I've tried this. Then you've got, you've, you've got, A, you're trying something new. You're meeting new friends. Um, but also, it's something also, also to talk about. It's not, well, oh, just, I'm doing nothing until you next come home. It's, hey, I've tried this and that was fun or maybe it wasn't. I don't know. But just 
trying something new for you. Well, it's interesting because it, there's a huge, um, I mean, a very large preponderance of women who get to the stage, who become entrepreneurs, who do things to reinvent themselves. Mm. Oh no, did I just lose you? Are you still there? No, I'm still here. Okay. I still here. don't know what happened, but I can't find you. So, but you can see me? I can see you. I okay, can. Then I'm not going to worry about it. I lost you, but you're somewhere in here. But you were <laughs> saying, um, oh, this is really frustrating. They're like, where are you? Um, I lost my train of thought. I apologize, but. No worries. Um, yes. Okay. So you were saying you can try something new and there is an ability to then communicate with your kids what you're trying and. And that, that also alleviates any guilt that they might feel about having left too. So that precisely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the, I'm refolding your t-shirts in your room until you come home is not a great way to communicate with, um, with your kids saying something like, I don't know, I'm, I, I started a new cookery class or I've got a new hobby and it's really cool or it's maybe not for me. It's, it's a conversation part. They, it's, it's nice for your kids to think that you're actually doing something while they're starting their next chapter. So are you starting? Right. Our next right. chapter that is, too. That totally makes sense. So, um, and then you said you had one more. And one I, more. I mean, it's, it's, it's an obvious one. It's, it's about reconnecting really with your, with your partner. Um, quite often, especially with my husband and I, we've, we've always put our children first. We've, we've, um, they've, they've been the center of our lives, so to speak. So often when children leave, it's about finding, you know, finding the ability to reconnect again and, and go on dates and doing things together. It, it's a simple thing, but Often when you don't have the children to bounce between you, you're taking one off to practice here or you're feeding them and watering them and seeing them out the door. Um, just take time to reconnect again. And what, the, what do the two of you want to do going forward, for example? That, that's wonderful. So just to recap very quickly, it was, you know, use the time wisely. Acknowledge however you feel because it, it's not bad or good. Use that technology to your advantage so you can stay connected. Use the time that you now have to try something different and new, which also will just enhance your relationship with your child. Mm. And then, you know, last but not least is use it, use also the time to be, to reconnect with your, potentially the primary relationship that maybe has suffered a little bit during exactly. the childbearing days. Exactly. And one, one bonus one I'm thinking of also is, getting back to the, the communication, try to be responsive and not intrusive. It's very easy to over um, communicate with your kids. You know, how are you doing? How's this? How's that? They, they have to find their, their balance too. And it's very, very easy to, I'm, I'm a fixer, for example. I'm, I'm the sort of person, my, my husband is the listener and I'm the fixer. So if our children have ever said, oh, something is wrong, I want to fix it. Whereas my husband will listen. And actually, sometimes they just want to say something. They just want to say, I did this, it went wrong, I burnt the saucepan or whatever, the, whatever happens. And they just want to say, they don't want you to fix it. So it, it's rather than just, you know, how is that burnt sauce, but, or how is, or how is this, or how is that? Just give them some breathing space, you know, just try and find the balance between not being overly, or I must call them again or whatever. Just, yeah. Right. Well, once again, meet them where they are is what I'm yeah, hearing. Exactly. Even after they leave, you have to meet them where they are. <laughs> exactly. So Jenny, if someone wanted to, you said you had something to offer the Cool Life community that they could download a free... Mm. Can you? I do. On my website, I've, I've got a guide. It's called Seven Steps to Rocking Midlife. So okay. it's seven ideas for midlife women. And also with, with each of the different points, um, there is some affirmations as well. So I've actually, not only can you have an, an, an audio version of this, there's a written version, all the tracks, the audio, the um, affirmations, they're all downloadable too. And there's also, I've recorded a restful meditation. Wonderful. So I will include the link to that um, in the description above and at the bottom of the comments. And ladies, if you have any questions for Jenny or myself, please put them in the comments. We will circle back. We will get back to you. We can even have Jenny on to discuss another topic. If, if, if there's another topic in midlife that you're interested 
in hearing about or chatting about. And if they download this, um, they will be subscribing to an email list, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, they'll be subscribing to your email list. And also, um, ladies, you'd be, just, you'd be subscribing to the Cool Life email list as well. But you, know, you can always unsubscribe if you don't find value in it, either one. But I look forward, I'm gonna go download this. Uh, it's a book, it's an ebook. Well, actually, it's, it was supposed to be seven steps to rocking midlife. It was going to be a little guide. And then as I, as I wrote it, it's become, it's become more of a book. So it's a little mini book, I suppose. Okay. Um, Perfect. But, um, and, and as you mentioned, of course, um, the, the email will be to, to Cool Life and to me, but I won't be sharing it any, anywhere else other than with, obviously, with you. So yeah. um, everybody's and email details are completely safe. Yeah, and me as well as over here. The cool life stuff stays cool life. Jenny, you have been, it's been a pleasure. I, this empty nest thing has been weighing on me for quite some time. I personally feel better because I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm not completely out of whack. I think I'm kind of doing it as well as I, I could leading up to it. So I really appreciate getting the validation. Ladies, if you have any other concerns or you want to know more about empty nest or you have a real, I don't know, there's something's like you're struggling with something, yeah. put it in the comments. We can circle back around. Jenny would be happy to give you, you know, more explanation or further advice or tell you where to get more information if you, if you exactly. need, you know, more than just what you heard here. Jenny, until the next time, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much. It's been lovely, Jack. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Okay.